Hey, welcome. This is Dylan here with Digital Native, and uh, today we got a fun tutorial. We're going to be going over some tips on how we might be able to create some Death Stranding like handprint effects in Cinema 4D using Octane. And um, the trick to an effect like this is we're not actually going to be animating much inside of Cinema 4D. Instead, we're going to be animating our textures here inside of After Effects. So I'm just going to jump over to Cinema 4D for one second here. Um, I have a simple scene set up here. Uh, I just have some ground plane set down with a camera that's going to be moving along the path here. And um, we want to put some handprints in this ground, so. In order to do that, we're going to be messing with the displacement channel in one of the textures. So I'm going to hop back over in After Effects and um, show you what's going on here. Now, I did create this effect maybe a year and a half ago, so I did kind of have to do some reassembling to put this back together. But I have this old project file here, and we're going to go through and check it out. So. Um, So to start, you'll want to open up your depth mat for your ground plane and put it in After Effects. And now what we want to do is we want to track handprints kind of across this plane. So I went online and um, got a handprint here. Let's check it out. There it is. And um, any handprint will do. I kind of liked this one because it had some weird markings in it that would kind of break up the dirt a little more. But um, I eventually found that these holes were kind of messing with the effect because basically how this works is any area that are, is dark is going to push in to our mesh and anything that is white it's going to pull out so right now this handprint is going to be pushing into the ground but we're, we have these weird things here so this part of the hand is not necessarily going to be pushed in it's going to be left sticking out so what I did there is I just added another quick layer over the top to kind of push in the center a little more but uh, once you get your hand into After Effects um, I did some weird keyframing things with some chokes. So if I just turn these off. So the first one is set from probably max, yeah. Choking all the way and coming out. And you'll just see a little bit of the effect happening on these edges. And then I just went and duplicated that about four times. So we get something like this, which is nice. And then overall, this was a little bit sharp. So I added a blur over the top of it just to blur it out some. And we get something like this. Also, there's this top layer. And I put some marks on the fingers as well because there were some holes there that I wanted to fill in some. And that's looking good. Now, um, with the effect here, right now we're getting this push in, but um, I wanted to get some of the dirt raising around the hand as it's pushing it in. So, in order to do that, we want to add another layer. So. Here, I just took a solid that was a lighter color than our handprint, and I just quickly did a sloppy mask around the edge, and then I just feathered it out. And then to animate that, we just have the expansion coming out. So you'll see it start here and kind of push out to the sides. 
which is nice. And then, um, don't know if this is necessary, but I wanted to add a little bit of breakup to this expansion on the mud. So I added another layer with the same mask, same thing going on, but um, I just added some fractal noise over the top to kind of uh, break up this white a little more. And you get something like this. So now we have the, let me turn this off. We have the push in, we have the dirt coming out. Last thing I wanted to add was, if you reference the uh, Death Stranding some of the Death Stranding footage, I mean, I made this a year and a half ago, so it was a lot of the older stuff they had kind of released, but um, whenever the hands are kind of laid down, there's kind of this effect that its fingers are being, like, dragged across the surface as it picks up the, the hand. So let me just show you here. So that little motion, I don't know if that was... Good enough, let me try this one. So you see the dirt kind of gets swept away at the front as if its hands are kind of dragging on the dirt. Oh, that's a good one. See what I mean? But, um,. In order to do that, I added a 3D stroke and I just added some paths here. And um, did some tapering on our stroke. Let me solo this. So basically this is happening. Any second now. There it goes. So just a quick little stroke animation, something like that. And on top of everything, we get this. Oh, we get nothing. There we go. Hand comes in, dirt pushed out, and then the fingers come across. That's basically all I did to create this weird handprint. And then um, once you get that down, it just takes taking this, you know, duplicating it, move it over here, and then it's the other hand. So we need to flip it, flip it the right way. There we go. And um, it may help to pre-compose these and then place them around. I went ahead and did that for all of these already. So get something like this. And you'll just want to spread these out so they happen one after another. And then you may want to double check back and forth between Cinema 4D, maybe render one of these out, one frame, and uh, test it out because this is an 8K sequence that we'll need to render out. And uh, when I rendered it out, it took about two hours. So it's not like waiting two hours for something to render out and then you find all these mistakes. So maybe just test it with one frame, see if you're getting the result you like. And then. Um, when all is said and done, go ahead and queue up your sequence. And then um, I used a TIFF sequence as my output. Okay, so once that's done, I'm gonna hop over into Cinema 4D and let's apply our new displacement. Just go ahead and pipe in your displacement 
and you should see right away effect taking place cool that's looking good now we do need to go in and make sure it is using all of our frames so for me i have 192 frames and uh, 24 frames a second Cool, already looking good. Now, we want to get some of that liquid that comes up in the hand. So, in order to do that, we can duplicate all of our planes. And I'm just going to put these in a group so I can tell them apart. And I just have this black shiny liquid. I'm going to throw it on the tops of these. Now, you'll notice on some parts, it'll seem to work really well, but on other parts of your plane, you might get this bleeding of the liquid, which we don't want. It does look cool, but for this purpose, we're going to limit the liquid to just the handprints. So in order to do that, we need to hop back over here and create a mat for our water and in order to do that I just took I took all my handprints and um, I just took these two layers so the hand and the inner hand and um, soloed all of those and put them in their own comp and then from there, I just put a white fill over the hands. And then we got a black backdrop. And our ins and outs are the same. So this should be the same timing everything as our ground plane. And everything should work out. So once you get this all set up, go ahead and render that out. This shouldn't take long because we don't have this 8K texture under it. For me, it took about 10 minutes to, want to uh, render this water mat out. And then uh, once you're done with that, go ahead and jump back into Cinema. And we'll open up our opacity channel in our liquid. Put that right in there. And then in our animation, same thing, 192. Cool. And there we go. And now our liquid is only in our hands and I actually think that it is a little low so I'm just gonna bump them all up in the Y by one cool. and that's kind of it uh, from there I uh, I use some forester leaves or flora to just kind of populate the scene around it and just animated their uh, grow on so they once the hand passes the plant kind of grows into place and then I also played with the hyperwind settings to give them a bit of movement and that's kind of it for this effect I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial hope you learned something new and uh, if you have any questions, comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. But if not, I'll see you in the next one.